Good morning this morning. I am making a teaching video on the words that are found throughout the, the Bible related to end times prophecy that talk about the abomination of desolation. And so I'm going to, uh, I've just done a search of the scriptures um, on an online um, Bible software um, of the words abomination of desolation. Now it's talked about in Daniel um, which is a foreshadowing of end times events because it also did happen uh, during the time of Daniel's life and I'll explain that to you um, but it also um, will happen in the end times prophecy uh, as they are being fulfilled um, there will be uh, an abomination of desolation that that's there I did uh, look up the words abomination and desolation in the dictionary just to see what it said and I was um, wasn't expecting to find the words uh, depopulation when I looked up the word desolation and um, it just had me thinking about what's happening in our world today as the um, uh, enemy ISIS, Hamas, uh, the uh, extremist Muslims are, are beheading uh, Christians, uh, and we're not just talking Jews, we're talking Christians, we're talking, um, uh, they are burying children alive, they are raping and torturing, and it's just a hor horrific thing. And so that depopulation uh, wasn't a word that I was expecting to find under desolation. Now, am I saying that that is um, the fulfillment of end times prophecy? No, I'm saying that that is uh, perhaps a an additional foreshadowing of what's going to happen uh, as the um, the things that need to happen in order for um, the end times to be fulfilled, the prophecies in the end times. I want to um, start this by saying that we know that Satan is a liar and everything that Satan wants to do is to set himself up as God. Um, and so uh, I've got a couple scriptures here I want to read you. Uh, so you'll have the... Um, scripture reference as you want to go in and look at this yourself okay I'm gonna start in um, Revelation 12 12 therefore rejoice you heavens and you who dwell in them but woe to the earth and the sea because the devil has gone down to you he is filled with fury because he knows that his time is short we already know how um, Bible prophecy fil uh, is fulfilled the devil is a loser, but while he's here, he is going to try to constantly keep you uh, preoccupied in this spiritual war, uh, hoping to keep you from worshiping God and knowing God. Um, and so, <clears throat> and I think that's a lot of what our media is guilty of today is that it's trying to keep us so focused on drama and starting race wars and things that we're not seeing what is right out there happening in in our own country we have uh, 28 or more jihad Islamic training camps on American soil um, we have a government that's trying to take away our our guns um, so that we will be left defenseless when uh, a holy war breaks out uh, uh, here on, on American soil against the Muslims and the Christians. And uh, we're not allowed to stockpile food. That's against the law now to stockpile food. And uh, there's just a lot of things happening in our own um, law. Uh, the government made it uh, possible recently that our own military would be used against us. That's positioning us for martial law. And so uh, this all happened similarly with um, Hitler as he uh, destroyed the Jews um, at the Holocaust. And so I just say, be aware of what's going on. You really probably need to turn your TV off long enough to have some relationship with God and get into intimate fellowship with him so that you won't be deceived in the, in the days ahead because uh, it says that uh, many will be deceived um, in the end times prophecy. Okay, so here's, um, this is about uh, Satan being a liar and I'm going to read this to you and then I'm going to get into the abomination uh, desolation scriptures. Um, this is found in John 8, starting in verse 42. Jesus said to them, If God were your father, you would love me, for I came from God and now am here. I have not come on my own, but he sent me. Why is my language not clear to you? Because you are unable to hear what I say. You belong to your father, the devil, 
and you want to carry out your father's desire. He was a murderer from the beginning, not holding to the truth, for there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks his native language, for he is a liar and the father of lies. Yet because I tell you the truth, you do not believe me. Can any of you prove me guilty of sin? If I am telling the truth, why don't you believe me? He who belongs to God hears what God says. The reason you do not hear is that you do not belong to God. Okay, so the key scripture there is that the devil's a liar. He's been a liar from the beginning. He's going to, you know, he's, it's all about deceit. So I'm telling you this because he's going to try to make you believe, the Antichrist is going to try to make you believe that he is, um, you know, your savior. And he's not. We have one savior, God Almighty, um, who came dressed in a flesh suit to um, have fellowship with, with us here on the earth. He dwelled among us and he um, came and gave that flesh suit as a, an atonement sacrifice, uh, a perfect sacrifice, so that our sins would be forgiven. Um, and so, all right, now here I'm going to start in Daniel 9, 27, and this is talking about the abomination that causes desolation. Um, I'm going to read you 9, 27 first, but then I'm going to go to, um, and this is out of the NIV, but then I'm going to go to the Holman Christian um, version, and I'm going to read you a, a little bit more lengthy uh, passage here because I want you to hear all this. He will confirm a covenant with many for one seven. In the middle of the seven, he will put an end to sacrifice and offering and on a wing. He will set up an abomination that causes desolation until the end that is decreed is poured out on him. Actually, before I go to that, I want to read. Now, I, this is just a, a simple thing that you can do also. I went to gotquestions.org or .com, I can't remember, .org, um, and I asked, what is the abomination of desolation? I just typed that in. And I got a write up here. Now, I don't always agree with gotquestions.org, but I do um, see that there's some value in what they've written here. And so I'm going to bring it to you just as it's been written. Uh, again, my question was, what is the abomination of desolation? And here's the answer The phrase abomination of desolation refers to Matthew 24 15, which um, is where Jesus is talking about end times. Um, and I read that in, in the scriptures yesterday uh, when I talked about last days. It says, so when you see standing in the holy place the abomination that causes desolation spoken of through the prophet Daniel, let the reader understand. This is referring to Daniel 9.27, which is what I just read you. He will confirm a covenant, he will confirm a covenant with many for one seven. In the middle of the seven, he will put an end to the sacrifice and offering. And on a wing of the temple, he will set up an abomination that causes desolation until the end that is decreed is poured out on him. In 167 BC, a Greek, Greek ruler by the name of Antiochus Epiphanes set up an altar to Zeus over the altar of burnt offerings in the Jewish temple in Jerusalem. He also sacrificed a pig on the altar in the temple of Jerusalem. This event is known as the Abomination of Desolation. In Matthew 24, 15, New Testament, Jesus was speaking some 200 years after the Abomination. I'm sorry, I just lost my spot. that. <laughs> In Matthew 24, 15, Jesus was speaking some 200 years after the abomination of desolation described above had already occurred. So Jesus must have been prophesying that sometime in the future, another abomination of desolation would occur in a Jewish temple in Jerusalem. Most Bible prophecy interprets believe, interpreters believe that Jesus was referring to the Antichrist, who will do something very similar to what Antiochus Epiphanes did. This is confirmed by the fact that some of what Daniel prophesied in, nine, in Daniel 9.27 did not occur in 167 BC with Antiochus Epiphanes. Antiochus did not confirm a covenant with Israel for seven years. It is the Antichrist who in the end times will establish a covenant with Israel for seven years and then break it by doing something similar to the abomination of desolation in the Jewish temple in Jerusalem. Whatever the future abomination of desolation is, it will leave no doubt in anyone's mind that the one perpetrating it is the person known as the Antichrist. Revelation 13, 14 describes him making some kind of image which are all are forced to worship. Turning the temple of the living God into a place of worship for the Antichrist is truly an abomination. 
Those who are alive and remain during the tribulation should be watchful and recognize that this event is the beginning of the three and a half years of the worst of the tribulation period and that the return of the Lord Jesus is imminent. Be always on watch and pray that you may be able to escape all that is about to happen and that you may be able to stand before the Son of Man. That's Luke 21, 36. Okay, so I'm going to read you some from um, the Revelation 13 uh, passage, and I'm going to read you some from the Daniel 9 passage. Uh, I want to show you some other places where that um, the words abomination of desolation occur, um, just so that you can go look at them. Uh, it also appears in Daniel 12, 11, and it says, from that time that daily that the daily sacrifice is abolished and the abomination that causes desolation is set up, there will be 1,290 days. Okay, it's found in Matthew 24, 15. See when you sa see standing in the holy place the abomination that causes desolation spoken of through the prophet Daniel. Let the reader understand. Okay, and then Mark 13, 14 also has the same thing. Um, so you can go there and look at that. All right, so now I'm going to read a little bit from Daniel Nine. I'm going to try to keep this under 15 minutes, and then I'm going to go to Revelation 13. Now, um, I'm going to I'm going to do this quickly. I'm going to start in Daniel 9, verse 30, or I'm sorry, 20. While I was speaking, praying, confessing my sin and the sin of my people Israel, and presenting my petition before Yahweh my God concerning the holy mountain of my God, while I was praying, Gabriel, the man I had seen in the first vision, came to me in in my extreme weariness about the time of the evening offering. He gave me this explanation. Daniel, I've come now to give you understanding. At the beginning of your petitions, an answer went out, and I have come to give it, for you are treasured by God. So consider this message and understand the vision. Seventy weeks are decreed about your people in your holy city to bring the rebellion to an end, to put a stop to sin, to wipe away injustice, to bring in everlasting righteousness, to, to seal up vision and prophecy, and to anoint the most holy place. No one understand this from the issuing of the decree to restore and rebuild Jerusalem until the Messiah, the Prince, will be, 70, will be seven weeks and 70, 62 weeks. It will be rebuilt with a plaza and a moat, but in difficult times. After those 62 weeks, the Messiah will be cut off and will have nothing. The people of the coming Prince will destroy the city and the sanctuary. The end will come with a flood, and until the end there will be war. Desol desolations are decreed. Okay, and that word desolation, remember... I had one meeting that was depopulation. He will make a firm covenant with many for one week, but in the middle of the week he will put a stop to sacrifice and offering, and the abomination of desolation will be on the wing of the temple until the decreed destruction is poured out on the desolator. Okay, so um, that's as much as I'm going to read out of Daniel. Now I'm going to go to the Revelation 13 passage, and I'm going to start in verse 11. And I'm going to probably go all the way down to, uh, yeah, I'm going to go all the way down to uh, the end of chapter 13, verse 18. The beast from the earth is the subtitle. Then I saw another beast coming out of the earth. He had two horns like a lamb, but he sounded like a dragon. He exercises all the authority of the first beast, beast on his behalf and compels the earth and those who live in it to worship the first beast, beast whose fatal wound was healed. He also performs great signs, even causing fire to come down from heaven to earth before people. He deceives those who live on the earth because of the signs that he is permitted to perform on behalf of the beast, telling those who live on the earth to make an image of the beast who had the sword wound yet lived. He was permitted to give a spirit to the image of the beast so that the image of the beast could both speak and cause whoever would not worship the image of the beast to be killed. Okay, whoever would not worship the image of the beast to be killed. Isn't that sounding like the extremist um, that we're hearing about in the news today? Number 16, verse 16 says, And he requires everyone, small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to be given a mark on his right hand or on his forehead, so that no one can buy or sell unless he has the mark, the beast's name or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. The one who has understanding must calculate the number of the beast because it is the number of a man. His number is 666. Okay. Now, I did a little, uh, I watched a video this morning that talked about the Islam thinks the number 666 is a perfect number in the Quran. Um, I don't know. I haven't, I haven't verified any of that. I'm telling you what I saw this morning. And um, if that's the case... And Islam is the um, 
the beast or the, the entrance of the beast. Um, and we have to worship that beast in order to, um, you know, you cannot buy or sell unless he has the mark, the beast name, or the number of his name. Um, there's something uh, that we need to just be aware of. And so I'm asking you to go to God and talk to God about this whole thing so that you'll know as these end, end days approach where you should be. Um, and But certainly you should be under the shelter of the Lord's wing. Okay. And so I just pray that today that you will have some time to search the scriptures. And I pray that you will be blessed by Almighty God in the precious name of Jesus.